we'll pause now for a message from the NCAA. Everyone wants to be a winner, on the field or off. And winning requires hard work, here in the weight room or in the classroom. I know one thing, drugs don't make winners out of anybody. I've seen how peer pressure affects young people. I've had to fight it too. But I've learned it takes more a person to say no than it does to say yes. So I challenge you, just like I've challenged myself, say no to drugs and be a winner. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Let Mara Television and Appliance help you capture those special moments this Christmas with a gift from us. Buy this Whirlpool Touch Control Microwave Oven, now priced for the holidays at just $339, and we'll give you a new 35mm camera. Mara Television and Appliance also offers free weekly cooking classes at our store when you purchase a microwave from us. So don't wait until the last minute to do your Christmas shopping. Come in to Mara. It's the clauses, everybody. Have a chicken McNugget. Don't worry. It's under 63 calories. <laughs> Rudy, be a dear and open another 20-pack. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets 20-pack makes every holiday party happy and fun. Aren't we having fun? Mingle, mingle. Tiny Tim, tiny as ever. Take two. It's a good time <laughs> for the great taste. McDonald's. Time for McDonald's gift certificates. 50 cents each or a book of 10 for $5. Halftime score again, Montana State 12, Rhode Island 7. Look at that scenery in the background, the Bridger Mountains. We're happy to have Tom Perrick, the athletic director of Montana State, here with us now. First of all, Tom, that beautiful scenery and the most amazing hospitality I've ever seen in a great football game going. Let us thank you for everything so far. Well, you're most welcome. It's always a pleasure for Montana State and the people of Montana to host championship competition. We love it. Uh, we like the people aspect of it. The people out here are just tremendous, and we enjoy people like yourself, the NCAA being in here, people from Rhode Island. It's excellent. It's a fun exchange of information. And it's a good day for your football team so far. It's an exciting football game. It's a great weather day. It's an exciting game, too. Really fine football teams, defensively very strong. Some big plays, excitement. It's a lot of fun. The school is certainly no stranger to hosting NCAA championship events. You're going to have the skiing championships up on Bridger Bowl here in March. Last weekend, you were a host of a football game here, and uh, people get it done. Sure do. Uh, we hosted two years ago the NCAA skiing finals, and purportedly uh, was the best that had ever been done. And, and the people here do a great job of that. They know what they're doing, and they really wrap up and get with it and give everything that they have. It's fun doing these kinds of things. We enjoy them. You have affected the greatest turnaround in the history of NCAA football, going from 1-10 and 10 last year to a 10-2 and 2 record this year. It's a great tribute to your coaching staff and your kids, I think. I think the kids, number one, and the coaches, number two, and then they've just captivated the entire state of Montana with a tremendous purpose about what they had to do to get out and get it done, and our hats are off to them. Uh, we're certainly proud of, of their efforts. Let's talk about the Montana kids on this football team. They are, by and large, Montana boys playing football from Montana State University here today. And we understand a number of them are walk-ons who won their scholarships. That's exactly right. Uh, I think 16 of our 22 are Montana lads. On this particular football team, I'd say about nine of those are from very small communities, very small schools, a tremendous work ethic. They just really put their minds to what they're doing. They're fine students. They perform well on the field, and it's really a pleasure and a joy being around them. You never have to worry about what they're doing. You know, it's, it's a great football game. It's a great event, I think, for the NCAA and for the, the audience. I think that the school came all the way from the East Coast, 2,500 miles to play here today. Somewhat similar football teams, really. But, uh, it's just a great event to know that we're playing these championships on the field. It's a tremendous thing, and we certainly are indebted to the NCAA and to SPN for, for your efforts. Uh, we think it's a tremendous thing that 1AA institutions have an opportunity to have this kind of competition, to have this kind of exchange athletically and academically and culturally, and we appreciate your efforts putting that thing on the air so a lot of people can enjoy it. All right, and a good first half of football for your team. Again at halftime here, it's Montana State 12, Rhode Island 7. Now let's take a look at this profile of Montana State University. Montana State University is the state's largest educational institution. More than 11,000 students attend the land-grant university. Some say it's the attitude of the students that makes MSU something special. Others say it's the strength of the faculty. But whatever the reasons, and there are many, MSU is immensely popular. 
MSU offers a widely diversified curricula with bachelor's degrees in 42 fields covering 123 majors, master's in 39 fields, and doctorates in 16 fields. The research programs at MSU both support the instructional program and also contribute to the solution of important problems. The Agricultural Experiment Station, a key force in Montana agriculture, has nine locations in the state. MSU is an important resource to Montana, not only in its teaching and research programs, but outreach... Again, our halftime scene, and there's the score. Montana State 12, Rhode Island 7. We're at halftime in Bozeman, Montana, and we'll continue after this message from the NCAA. If you can't get a computer to do anything but frustrate you, Try the computer you already know how to use. Take Macintosh out for a free overnight test drive. Test drives now available at Emory Computers. At Montana Federal Credit Union, we're here when you need us. You know, most people don't realize the financial services of Montana Federal Credit Union are available to people all over the Triangle area, not just Lake Falls. But when you think about it, we've got the same needs out here in the country as the people in the big cities. And Montana Federal has met those needs since 1942. Montana Federal Credit Union is there when you need them, no matter where you are. Stop in today and see how easy it is to join. Those wild Montana skies that one of our favorite singers, John Denver, sang about quite a sight here in Bozeman, Montana. Get our halftime score, Montana State 12 and the University of Rhode Island 7. And Babe Cash is with us now at halftime. Babe is the athletic director at Idaho State University and the chairman of the West Region for NCAA Division 1-2A football. Now, that's a handful of words, baby. This is a handful of football here today. This is a well-known event. Congratulations. Well, Fred, uh, really, when I recommended Montana State, there was no doubt in my mind that Tom Perry and his fine crew would do an outstanding job in hosting this event and has proven that. And the two schools are giving us a great football game right now. Say, this is as good as you can see. Let's talk about how this playoff system works. There have been so much pushing for playoffs in all divisions. 1-2-A is having the playoff thing. Now, how does the whole thing work? How do you get in these playoffs? Well, Fred, it all started back in September when 86 football teams hopefully started on the road to Charleston. Two weeks ago, those 86 were reduced to 12. And the way we got the 12, we have six conference champs, which automatically, by winning the conference, you automatically qualify for the championship. Then we had six at large or independents. And uh, those, of course, dealt quite, uh, quite a bit with their season record and the competition they participated against. So now it's evolved down to the final four, and next week the final two. In Charleston, South Carolina, what is Division 1-2A? Well, that is just a step below 1A, and I guess maybe the classification and the cutting line is in Division 1A football, you're allowed 94 scholarships. In Division 1 AA scholarships, you're allowed 70 scholarships. Plus, in Division 1A scholarship, you can have eight full-time coaches, and in Division 1 AA, you can have six assistant coaches, one full-time coach. So really, it's a matter of finance. It's a little bit smaller in numbers, perhaps, but I'll tell you what, the football is very big out there. Again, congratulations to you and your people. Thank you very much, Fred, and you're also doing a fine job for us. Dave Cassia here again today. Again, our halftime score is Montana State 12, University of Rhode Island 7. We are at halftime in Bozeman, Montana. We'll be back right after this. Wherever a university or college stands, it stands and shines. Wherever it exists, the free minds of men, urged on to full and fair inquiry, may still bring wisdom into human affairs. The preceding message provided by the NCAA.
NCAA Division I 2A football championship from Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana. It's the Rams of the University of Rhode Island against the Bobcats of Montana State. Seven, Montana State with a five-point lead as we approach the second half. The Bobcats will kick off the Rhode Island. Quick look at the first half statistically. Rushing yards, not much there. 40, Montana State, 13, Rhode Island. Didn't expect much there, but look at the passing yards. Coach Eddie Robinson, 207, Montana State, 110 passing yards for Rhode Island. The big ball is in the air. Mike Sanders is the beat back. That's going to be picked up by Tony Hill. Is back there with him. And Tony Hill for Rhode Island right back up the middle. Knocked down for a half shy of the 20-yard line. Very close to the 20. So Rhode Island has the ball down by five as we start the second half here today. 12 to 7, Montana State in front. John Kenna made the stop for the Bobcats of Montana State. Coach Robinson, would you think that there's going to be many changes made by either side here at halftime? I really think it's going to be more patient on the offense to really take what the defense might offer you and and I think we'll be a little more scoring like that. Damian Riley's wide right, wide left, Bill Civitella. Tom Earhart, the quarterback, with one running back behind him, Rich Kelly. First and ten, the second half just getting in the way. Earhart fires complete. Shy of the 40, knocked down at the 38-yard line, but a first down for Rhode Island. The tight end, Bob Donfield, made the catch. He's a 6'2 freshman from Woodcliffe Lake, New Jersey. Derry Keeble made the stop. They come out throwing to open the second half, too, just as you would expect them to. Again, the winner of this game today will play the winner of the Louisiana Tech Middle Tennessee game next week in Charleston, South Carolina for the 1-2-A National Championship. And whichever team comes out of here, maybe to say is going to be a strong representative. Again, it's Riley wide to the right side, Civitella left. They look at Civitella, now they're going to try to get the ball to him. It's intercepted. Picked off by Montana State, Civitella making the tackle. That Kimball made the interception for Montana State. Now Civitella has the football. Rhode Island's got it back. It is Rhode Island football after a wild exchange. Doug Kimball made the interception, and, well, let's let the pictures tell the story. It's first and ten, Rhode Island. Tom is back to throw, and he looked. He overthrew his receiver. Okay, now Kimball has the interception. Now Civitella comes up behind him. Here's Civitella, number seven, coming into your picture. That's not Jesse Jones, that's Kimball, incidentally. And now Civitella simply takes the football right out of his hands, and Rhode Island has it back with 14 minutes left in the third quarter. First and 10, Rhode Island. That's a wild exchange. Complete to Foster. Brian Foster making the catch inside the 40 at the 39. Kimball and Kirk Timmer making the tackle that time. That's a very opportunistic play by Bill Civitella. Here it comes again. Watch Civitella just simply take the ball out of his hands. I really think all he wanted to do was knock a loose coach the way he went after it. Yeah. And he came out with a lot more than just knocking a loose. He got the ball back. Civitella now wide to the right side. Riley wide left. Second down three. At the 39-yard line of Montana State. And the Bobcats jumping across the line of scrimmage making contact. It could be that the Rhode Island offensive line had moved in there. It appeared that the left guard moved. And as soon as he did, the Bobcat lineman jumped all over it. A legal procedure against Rhode Island. A long half of football to go. 12 to 7, Montana State leads. Rhode Island took the early lead. Montana State, down 7 to nothing, scored, missed a two-point conversion. Came back to score late in the half on an outstanding catch by Tom White. And again, missed the two-point conversion. Now it's second and eight, Rhode Island. Football now at the 44-yard line of Montana State. Rich Kelly, he has room up the middle. Look at him power his way inside the 30 to the first down at the 29-yard line. Rich Kelly, a senior running back from Miami, Florida, finally knocked down out there by Kirk Timmer. Rich Kelly with an outstanding job of running. 
This is Kelly on a quick trap because he broke the tackle and he's a very good runner. He's the leading rusher. Kelly this year ran for 807 yards. And he has been eight more yards in pass receptions this year. Earhart has the pass. Outstanding catch by Civitella, and he's wrestled down at the 11-yard line. Good grab that time by Bill Civitella, a senior from Villanova, Pennsylvania, before Timmer and Kimball could knock him down, and Civitella has two big plays in his drive yeah. now. And he makes a, an outstanding slant in. And Tom is on target. You see him here. A great catch in front of the defender. Well, he had it. Reloaded on the grab and held on to the football. You see him, 5'9", 165, and snagged it in traffic. Now we're on, knocking on the door again. With 12, 20 left in the third quarter. And Civitella again, he's at the five, and he's going to get knocked down there. Well, he slipped out of the grasp of one man. Rodney Holland had a hand on him and lost him, then got some help over there from the defensive teammate who finally knocked him down. So it's going to be second down for Rhode Island. The football is now at the four-yard line. Civitella ran a quick hitch and, and drove the receiver back and now uh, Tom is on target. Which I don't think it's second and goal. I believe there might be just a little bit of room in there where they could come up with a first down between maybe the one-yard line and the goal line if it came down to that. But for all practical purposes, it's goal second at the four. Fired incomplete intended for Damian Riley in the end zone. Riley winds up in the snowbank. Rodney Holland was back there with him, so now it's going to be third down at the four-yard line. He had beaten his man on the slant. They're really running the good slant in pattern. It was a catchable ball. He played his hands, and he missed it. Riley has a touchdown pass to his credit in this game. Now Rich Kelly comes out, and Mike Sanders in at the running back. Donfield, the tight end left. Foster right. Silatella, wide left. Damian Riley, wide left. Third down. Paul Rhode Island at the four-yard line in Montana State. Earhart throwing incomplete. That time it was attended for Brian Foster, the tight end, who came off the right side. Joe Roberts was there with him, and now it's going to be fourth down. And Tom Earhart is coming to the near sideline to talk to his coach, Bob Griffin. Rhode Island last week beating Richmond 23-17 in first round action in Division 1-2A. Earhart has the play. It'll be fourth down from the four-yard line. Send Riley wide right. Civitella wide left. Foster the tight end right. Donfield left. Sanders the running back. Earhart with a long count. Wants to throw it quick. Couldn't get rid of it. Now does up the middle. It is... A touchdown. touchdown. He made the catch. A tremendous grab. Doug Kimball was all over the receiver down there. But the catch was made. It is a touchdown. I believe it was Mike Sanders was the, the man who made the catch. The running back came out of the backfield. There were two Rhode Island people over there. And Rhode Island has the lead now, 13 to 12. Eleven twenty-eight left in third quarter action. Hot and heavy action here in Bozeman, Montana. And now Stringfellow. Oh, they're not going to attempt the extra point. It's 13-12. They're going to go for two to try to get a field goal advantage here. One hit and down, not much good. Earhart. Rolling left. Looking. Dumps it in the end zone. It's broken up. Incomplete. Okay. Let's take a look right. back at the touchdown now. There's Earhart. All right. This is Tom. He goes to Donfield here. It was delayed. It was delayed, but he, he found the open receiver. So with 11.28 left in our third quarter, there's your score now. Rhode Island 13, Montana State 12. If you're looking for a gift for the men on your list, Kaufman's is a store that can't be missed. They've got sweaters and shirts and slacks and jeans for tall men, short men, and all in between. Suits, sport coats, socks, and shoes. Brand names and fashions that have been in the news. Coats, jackets, belts, and ties. They've even got dumb coats to fit all the guys. Service is professional. Gift wrap is free. Selection is finest as fine can be. When you think Christmas, think Kaufman's. It's a great place to shop.
We're Avatel, and we know how to bring smiles to your Christmas morning. There's a scene again, seconds from Rhode Island in the end zone again. Steve King is the lone deep back now in the goal line from Montana State. Springfellow about to hit the football. King, a little slip right there. And now he's trying to get to the outside and has a little working room. It was knocked down at the 35-yard line. Steve King, after the slip, got up and got to the outside. And Montana State comes up with good, strong field position again. He got it back to the 35-yard line before Dan O'Brien can make the tackle for Rhode Island. So now the Bobcats set up. Tom White comes wide to the left side. Bateman is wide right. Clements is in the slot. Jones is the running back. Come on now! Come on, Come on now! Come on, Come on, Come on, Kelly Bradley. Intended for White and threw his hands out of bounds. It'll be second down 10. That was a 31-yard return that time. Williams, the cornerback, over defending that time against Tom White. Let's look at the Montana State cheerleaders. You know, both these schools wear the same color. I said those were Montana State cheerleaders on the Rhode Island side of the field. Maybe I better verify that. They might have made the trip with them. Whose are they? Are those Montana States? Okay, they are. Pass is complete to the tight end, Joe Bignell. He breaks one tackle. It's across the 45 to the 48-yard line. You mentioned in the first half they hadn't been going to Bignell very much. They did that time, and Moran and Williams had to come up and make the stop out of the secondary. He does a very sideline, and he's big. He's a good target, and uh, Bradley hit him. And Kelly was on target with him. So it's 11-08 left in the third quarter now, 13-12 Montana State. As they go back to the tight end, Joe Bignell, who makes his first catch in a while, a 13-yard reception, and his first down, Montana State. Clements. That's going to be knocked down at midfield. There's a game on the play of about a yard and a half. It'll be second and a long eight. It was Pete Hickey, the nose guard, who came all the way out to the side to make the tackle that time. Play's been pretty good for Montana State today, but that time, the Island had it pretty well shut down. The nose of the football right on the 50-yard line. The 10.46 left in the third quarter. Dave Arnold looking on the far side. Some of the fans here in Bozeman, Montana. Well, I mentioned at halftime, the hospitality here has just been outstanding. So has the football. Second and eight now. Long count for Kelly Bradley. They may not get this play off in time, and they're not going to. Some uncertainty along the line of scrimmage that time. Bradley apparently was changing plays. But the defense was moving on him, and he wasn't sure of what he had seen. And, and this is the way you stop it, throwing interception, to be sure, before you get it thrown. Well, it's better, I guess, to take a five-yard penalty than to give the football up. It certainly is. 10-20 left in third quarter action here. 13-12, Rhode Island in front of Montana State now. It was 7-0 Rhode Island, then 7-6, then 12-7 Montana State, now 13-12 Rhode Island. Second down, 13 for Montana State at the long 35-yard line. Kelly Bradley this time sends Kelly Davis in motion to the right side. Williams goes with it. Bradley with some pressure on, throws complete to Big Nell, who goes down immediately. And there's a loss on the play of five yards as Big Nell was wrapped up there by Charlie Watson, the strong safety who came up to make a tackle. They're going to spot the ball just across the 40-yard line. It's going to be third down. And 17 yards now for Montana State. That was a very good call. It just it didn't work because they looked to the open side and screened to the short side. Tom White wide to the left side. Brent Bateman wide right. But now the tight end is on the right side. They're having stood out a few yards. Bradley looking up the middle for Big Nell, and it's over his head. Was he interfered with? Nope. The home crowd doesn't like it. The Montana State bench doesn't like it. Charlie Watson, number 40, got tangled up with Joe Big Nell, the tight end there. The 
was some contact, but no penalty flag goes down. Rhode Island will get the football back. It's going to be fourth down 18 for Montana State. And Dirk Nelson is in the game to punt. Bernie Moran is going back along with Tony Hill. Double safeties. That's Moran. Tony Hill is back there with him. Dirk Nelson standing at his own 25. Gets a good snap and a lot of time. You talk about a high-hanging punt. Tony Hill catches it at the 7-yard line. And again, there's an outstanding kick coverage down there. And he gets punched twice hard. Oh, he got racked up. The first man to hit him was Duffy Cox. And then along came Ken Lang to finish it up. But Duffy Cox put a good shot on him first. And then Duffy Lang got there. Outstanding kick coverage. We have time out here with 9-10 left in our third quarter to score. Rhode Island 13, Montana State 12. I've been an ad customer for more than 20 years for myself, my family, and my office benefit programs. In all cases, I'm extremely happy with the investment results. At DA Davidson & Company, we have thousands of satisfied customers in all walks of life. It's a pleasure working with professionals I enjoy and trust. Thanks, Dad. DA Davidson & Company, an investment firm you like to tell your friends about. Now, on the largest inventory reduction sale in Montana at DJ's Auto Plaza, all 84s and 85s have been discounted. Never before have over 370 new used cars and trucks been priced this low. This 1982 Mazda RX-7 five-speed fully loaded and a sunroof for only $99.85. Uh, this 1975 five-speed Volkswagen Sirocco front-wheel drive is super transportation for only $15.88. Don't miss this year-end clearance at DJ's Auto Plaza, 2720 10th Avenue South. Hard will bring his ball club out of the huddle down by one. Back in the middle of the screen. Rich Kelly is the lone running back sitting in there. Civitella wide right. Damian Riley wide left. There's Earhart. It's going to be a running play to Kelly, and he's at the 15 yard line. There's a gain on the play of about three. Call it second down seven. Lonnie Burt, who's had a big day at the nose guard spot for Montana State, made the tackle again. Kirk Timmer, one of the linebackers, was there to help out. Bonnie Bird has been a factor on this defensive end. To repeat, the winner of this game will be in the national championship game in Charleston, South Carolina next weekend against either Middle Tennessee or Louisiana Tech. Second down seven for Rhode Island. goes to Kelly and that time the Montana State defense is sitting right there waiting for him. They might have gotten a yard of a play but Mark Fellows and Lonnie Burt made the stop for Montana State. And it's going to be third and about six we'll call it for Rhode Island here. Rhode Island doesn't do much different. They come out, they set with two tight ends, two wide receivers, one running back and come at you. Well yes they do but they know what they are doing because they delay the tight end sometimes to try to come under the under defense and they always looking to go up top. So it's going to be third down, still seven, we'll call it. That play was stopped for no game. Mike Sanders in at running back now. Tom Earhart leads seven yards for the first down. The handoff goes to Sanders, and he has stopped cold at the line of scrimmage. That time, Rhode Island did not go to the air, and the Montana State defense reacted very quickly. There were about five blue jerseys in there, led by Tex Sakura, defensive tackle. Here's a play. We had great penetration uh, from the interior, defensive interior. He just didn't have any place to run. They played the play extremely well. Greg Wilkes was there to help out, with, along with Kirk Timmer. Sakura made the initial hit. And the kick is going to be picked up by Doug Kimball at the 45-yard line, and he took a shot from Rhode Island player right there. So Montana State gets it back down by a point with 7-12 left in the third quarter here in Bozeman, Montana. Damon Gillick and Chris Hughes were the defenders for Rhode Island on the play. Well, now let's see. But they didn't throw a pass on that series. Kept it on the ground and got nowhere with it. Now here comes Montana State. Kelly Bradley puts his ball club down at their own 45-yard line with Tom White, the wide receiver left. Brent Bateman wide right. Split the running backs. They now the tight end on the right side. That's Bateman in motion. Bradley's being chased, gets away from one man. Now trying to run away from another one is finally going to get hit and stop from behind. And the man that got to him 
I started to say Tony Hill. It was. It was number 18, Todd Tunnell, the defensive end, who had a shot at him once. Missed him and then got up and came back to get him. They had, ex they had very good coverage downfield, and he was scrambling to try to get somebody open, but he, they were all zoned down the field. It was Bob Dana, number 78, that had a shot at him, couldn't quite get the hand on him, and then Tunnell let him down. So it's going to be second down 13. The loss was three. Montana State now at their own 42-yard line. Bonus in the slot right. Bradley, again, with heavy pressure, he gets hit and rock. They came with the blitz. It was a linebacker that got there first. Pete Hickey made the tackle. Mark Rockwell, I believe, is a man to put the initial pressure on. So again, the Rhode Island defense yeah. coming up with big plays. Both linebackers are going on this play, and they were able to get to him. It was Hickey, the nose guard, who made the stop, a 239-pound junior from Gloucester, Massachusetts. Mark Rockwell put the initial pressure on, and there's a Rhode Island player down on the field and injured. With 6.08 left in the third quarter, it's Pete Hickey, the nose guard, that made the tackle as a man who's down on the field right now. The Rhode Island trainer's working over it. 6.08 again left in our third quarter. Rhode Island has the 13-12 lead over Montana State here. And the Rams are about to get the football back. What seems to be happening now? They are still working over Pete Hickey. So the timeout goes on in the field. It comes with six minutes and eight seconds left in our third quarter. The score here, Rhode Island 13, Montana State 12. And we'll be back in Bozeman, Montana, right after this. When visions of sewing machines dance in your head, let Christmas this year be the answer instead. Ask for the Bernina 930, the dream machine. At Stretch and Sew Fabrics Bernina, purchase the automatic Bernina 930 and receive a $500 Burnett Overlock sewing machine absolutely free. So when visions of sewing machines dance in your head, buy this package worth $2,000 for only $1,500 instead. At Stretch and Sew Fabrics Bernina, at a new location across from Holiday Village, open weekdays till 8 and Sundays noon to 4. You Sports, a family tradition since 1952, has something for everyone on your Christmas gift list. For the fitness-conscious person, Ukes carry the finest in exercise equipment, including rowing machines, benches, and exercise bikes. For your favorite man or lady, choose from a Via Tiger and Puma running shoes, now sale priced. You'll find your favorite college jersey, your favorite college cap, plus a full array of pro caps and NFL helmets. Ukes Sports, where you're always treated like a pro holiday village. This is KFBB-TV, Channel 5, Great Falls. If he gets back in the game, and now it's third down and 21 yards for Montana State at their own 36-yard line. Double receivers wide right. Little look, look this time from Montana State. Bradley straight back. He's going to go deep. And Jennifer Bradley. And there's going to be an interference call. Tony Hill was the man defending down there against Kelly Bradley, and he hit him perhaps just a little bit too quickly. First down for Montana State. I'd hear they give him time to throw, and Kelly goes with the lead pass. Kelly, De Kelly Bradley here to Kelly Davis now. Davis had a, had a step on him. That's a tough play for a cornerback. You have to time it perfectly. You see Tony Hill reach in just a little bit too quickly and get Kelly Davis on the arm just before the ball got there. Because had the ball been longer, he'd had it. 5.43 left in the third quarter. It's a first down for Montana State. The football plays squarely on the 50. The Bobcats are at midfield. That was Tom Mellon, the man in motion that time. Bradley, again with outstanding protection, throws for the tight end, and it's over his head. Joe Bignell went in the air, but couldn't bring it back down again. It'll be second and ten, Montana State at the 50. Todd Tunnell was the defender on the play. Last year, Fred, uh, that infraction, he would have had the ball on the spot. If I talk about that a little bit, another change made in the rules. I don't know how you feel about the rule, Coach. 
Uh, well, I like it the way they have it this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they would have been uh, near the goal line. It's just a 15-yard penalty now. Second and 10, Montana State. Kelly Bradley looking over the defense. As Darren Dietrich, wide left. Look at Kelly Davis, didn't find him open. Now he's going to go deep for Dietrich, and he's out of bounds. The pass will be incomplete. So Kelly Bradley looking a little bit deeper on this series than he has been for most of the day. Ray Williams was the defender back here. There you see Dietrich on the isolated play. Yeah, he's on the fly, but he's covered. Now he's breaking open, but the pass is off the field. Ray Williams running with him down there. Third down, 10, Rhode Island. First two passing attempts on this series have misfired. Let's we'll see if Kelly Bradley can get him something here. He has Tom White wide left, Bateman wide right. Bradley getting a little pressure this time, but fires up the middle and nicely broken up that time. Good play by Charlie Watson, a strong safety. Who got in front, got in front of the intended receiver and broke it up. Charlie Watson, number 40, coming off the field. A freshman from West Hartford, Connecticut. Good defensive play. All right, here's Kelly on the drop. And they pretty much covered down the field. It appears, uh, Fred, that uh, they're going away from the control game. And they want to get it all on one down. Well, they're going to give the football up here as Montana State with 526 left in the third quarter. Kurt Nelson, high hanging punt. Tony Hill called for the fair catch, now lets it drop. And Montana State touched the ball right there. It's a dead ball now. Outstanding kick. That football was dropped dead at about the nine yard line. We'll wait and see where they spot it officially. I believe it's going to be the nine. So Dirk Nelson with another outstanding punt from Montana State. That was a 41 yard kick, but not so much from a distance standpoint, but the fact that he was able to drop it where he did. He has killed 15 punts inside the 20 this year. That's a pretty good accomplishment. Very good. 5 17 left in the third quarter. Rhode Island has the ball in a one point lead. Out here at Montana State, coming to their feet to cheer their defense. Tom Earhart, right outs on both sides. Earhart looking, fires up the middle, and it's complete. That's the tight end, Brian Foster, who made that catch in heavy traffic. He had Damon Riley, Damian Riley cutting right behind him. They haven't been able to work with Foster that much today, but he has been there a few times. On this pass, they have the top... Uh, the lead receiver's covered, and he went under the under defense, the linebackers, and hit the, the tight end. Now you see Kirk Timmer, number 42, make the initial tackle there, and he gets some help from his defensive teammates. Fleet Leinbarger was there, and so was Rodney Holland. First and 10, Rhode Island. Earhart has Riley. Rod Wright, the handoff goes to the running back. Mike Sanders has had a good day for Rhode Island. And he's up to about the 30-yard line. There's a gain on the play of, we'll call it three, and make it second down seven. Sanders, the little 5'5 senior out of Lynn, Massachusetts. Knocked down by Troy Timmer, who's 6'4", about a foot bigger, <laughs> and about 80 pounds heavier. There's Sanders on the sideline now. He's from Lynn Classical High School in Lynn, Mass. 4.23 left in third quarter action here. 13 to 12, Rhode Island with the ball on a one-point lead. Damian Riley, wide right. So the cutter wide left. The tight end right is Foster. Downfield, the tight end left. Look at that front set up by Montana State. They have everybody up there, and here they all come, and the pass incomplete. Intended over here for Damian Riley in Montana State with all those people up front. Got some pressure on that thing. They put a lot of pressure on him, and, and the line, they, they had the people coming out covered. He couldn't get to them right away. Rodney Holland, the cornerback that had the play covered over here, the pass intended for Damian Riley. So now it's going to be third down seven for Rhode Island at their own 30-yard line. Civitella comes wide right. Riley goes to the left side. They have the eight people up front showing blitz. Montana State stacking everybody in, looking like they're going after him. The deepest back is back about five yards, and the pass is complete, and the first down for Rhode Island. Doug Kimball was the defensive back who rode the receiver out of bounds in the far side of the field. They went tumbling over the bench. But the reception made by the tight end, Bob Donfield, the freshman from Woodcliffe Lake, New Jersey over there, who has a touchdown grab to his credit here today. And so with 3.57 now left in third quarter play, Rhode Island 
has a first down, but there is a player down on the field. Is that Earhart? That is Earhart lying on the field. Back at the 20-yard line, the Rhode Island quarterback. On that particular play, Fred, he made a good read because uh, they had man coverage and they were coming after him and he was able to hit the open receiver. The uh, receiver ran a very good pattern. Earhart is on his field. That's head coach Bob Griffin out there with the Rhode Island trainers making sure that his quarterback is okay. And Earhart has had a big day here today. 3.57 left in third quarter action. The Rams of Rhode Island have a first down, and they're going to bring Earhart off the field. And Greg Farlin, the 5'11 freshman from Southbridge, Massachusetts, the backup quarterback, will be in there. There you see Farlin, number two, is stopping to talk to his coach, Bob Griffin. Earhart is walking off the field and appears to be okay. They're going to just bring him out for a play or two to let him collect himself. There's Farland, the freshman, in a heck of a spot now. In the middle of a game like this, his team up by one with 3.57 left in the third quarter, and Farland now at the controls. And uh, goes with running back Mike Sanders, who's straight ahead, gets a couple of yards. Mark Fellows, the defensive end, knocked him down. That's Tom Earhart on the sideline. Greg Wilkes, the linebacker, made the stop there, and here comes Earhart back on the field. He was just shaken up. He's going to come back in. So Earhart, right back in the ball game after one down. Riley comes wide to the right side. Wide left, Bill Civitella. Earhart may be checking off at the line of scrimmage, going with a long count. Again, Montana State has all those people up front. showing blitz. Fellows coming after him, but the pass is complete. For the tight end, Foster gets away from one man and is now shoved out of bounds at midfield. Foster with a pretty good run before Doug Kimball could knock him out of bounds. On the same play that he was hurt the last time, uh, to the left, he, brought, he came to the right with it. and uh, They had the man coverage, and he was able to beat the, the defender. Rhode Island just went over 200 yards passing in the ball game. Montana State has 216. And Rhode Island had 190 yards going into that play and a pick up there. That was, was a great point. That was a great throw uh, by Tom. He found his tight end Brian Foster that time. First and ten, Rhode Island, a yard shy of midfield with 308 left in the third quarter. Rhode Island leading by a point. Earhart looking, bumps. Foster again, complete at midfield. He's at the 46. Trying to fight his way and knocked down finally by five Montana State defenders there, led by Doug Kimball and Kirk Timmer. But there's a gain on the play of about five yards. Fred, Second down five. That's the mark of a good quarterback. The primary receiver was uh, covered, and he was able to come to a uh, secondary receiver. Right at the moment, Earhart doing a pretty good job of picking that Montana State defense apart and taking what they're giving. 2.32 left in third quarter action here. Again, it's Rhode Island up by a point. Riley wide left. Silatella right. Foster is the tight end right. Donfield the tight end left. Earhart pumps, throws quickly. It's complete to Donfield. Bob Donfield knocked out of bounds on the far side. Inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. Another first down for Rhode Island. Cleet Leinbarger and Rodney Holland on the tackle for Montana State that time. And Rhode Island moving the football effectively here. Shadow is starting to get a bit long, even though it's only 2.10 in the afternoon here in Bozeman, Montana. This game started at 11.45 Mountain Time. 11.40, excuse me. The temperature right near 45 degrees now. Bright sunny days. A beautiful day for a football game here in Bozeman. First and 10, Rhode Island. Inside the Montana State 40. Could be a big drive for the Rams. They're up by a point at the moment. Earhart fires. It's complete to Foster at the 35-yard line. The football popped out of there, but I think they're going to rule it. No fumble. That was Damian Riley, not Foster. Excuse me. Rodney Holland and Cleet Linebarger made the tackle as Damian Riley, the wide receiver, came up with the reception. He's back and on a five, and he, he does a hook pattern, and he makes an outstanding catch in front of the defender and holds on to the ball. Dave Gilbert now is in the ball game for Rhode Island, replacing the Damian Riley. Second down three. See 
what Earhart comes up with here. He appears to be checking off at the line of scrimmage. Long count on the play. Now he does get the play in motion. He's going to be hit. Mark Fellows has him. The ball pops loose in there. They're going to call it a sack and not a fumble. Mark Fellows had heavy pressure on him and dropped the quarterback. I think they say that the play was dead, that they didn't get the play started in time. That's a little bit of a break for Rhode Island. As Mark Fellows came across and knocked the football loose, there's going to be a delay of game penalty with 1.17 left in the third quarter. Mark Fellows beginning late in the second quarter asserting himself in this football game. He's an outstanding player from Shadow, Montana. He'll play in this rainbow. Tom, what has really happened? The tight end uh, step delay is slanting out on the linebacker towards the sideline, and he can't cover him after the wide receiver has gone deep, and he continues to be open to either side. Second down eight now for Rhode Island at the 38-yard line of Montana State. Rhode Island leading by a point with a minute seven left in the third quarter. Tom Earhart looking things over at the line of scrimmage. And off to the running back. And a little bit there. He's inside the 35 to the 33. Greg Wilkes, the linebacker, making the initial hit there for the Montana State defense and getting help from Kirk Timmer. So Kelly got a few yards on the play. It's going to be third down and a long two. Almost three. 38 seconds now left in the third quarter. There's your scoreboard with the Bridger Mountains in the background. Wiley comes wide right. Silatello goes wide left. Foster the tight end right. Downfield the tight end left. Kelly the running back. Third and a long two. Earhart wants to throw. Looks quickly at Silatello. Now the ball is caught by the tight end downfield. I think he has the first down. He appears to be inside the 30-yard line. Rodney Holland and Kirk Timmer came up to make the stop from Montana State. Well, Donfield's had a big day. Fred, this is the same play. The tight end continues to slant to the sideline, and the, the flanker has carried the defense deep, and the linebacker isn't able to run with the tight end on the slant, and, and Tom is really putting the ball right on the spot. Earhart now is thrown for 221 yards. Double Bradley from Montana State for 216. It's first and 10. And Tom's getting a little mixed up at the line of scrimmage here. No, not. That's the end of the quarter. They decided to just run the clock out. Donfield has caught seven passes for 47 yards. We've reached the end of three quarters here in Bozeman, Montana. At the end of three quarters, our score now, Rhode Island 13, Montana State 12. Hold on. How do? Hey. There's a special place where a dad can look back and a kid right. can look ahead okay. together. At First Liberty Federal Credit Union, you're first with us. Everyone, our tellers, new accounts people, loan officers, member service advisors are all part of the team giving you practical, low-cost financial services. Services like $2 a month checking with no minimum balance or per check charge. You get overdraft protection and monthly dividends, too. To get $2 a month checking and other low-cost financial services, join First Liberty today. You'll be first with us. Main Gate, Malmstrom at 920 Central West. Before you give up on computers, try the computer you already know how to use. Take Macintosh out for a free overnight test drive. Test drives now available at Emory Computers. Good to go, Coach. Fred, the Bobcats are going to have to come up with some defense for the tight ends. They're slanting to the sideline and they continue to be open. Earhart just working and working, picking it apart. Short yardage here, short yardage there. Now he's going to go deep, looking for Damian Riley. And it is a touchdown. A tremendous catch by Damian Riley. Rhode Island getting the second touchdown grab by Damian Riley the afternoon. And he caught that thing with heavy pressure on him from Rodney Holland over there. Riley hurting a little bit. 
That's Bill Civitella, fellow receiver, down in the end zone with him, but Riley just made an outstanding catch. Riley, a junior out of the Bronx, New York. In the first quarter, Louisiana Tech leading Middle Tennessee 7-0. Here at the moment, it's 19-12. Rhode Island by 7. This is a big extra point attempt by Paul Stringfellow. Kick is up. It is good. And Rhode Island lead now becomes 8 points with 14.55 left in this football game. A masterful job of engineering that drive by Tom Earhart. Timeout taken here with 14.55 left in the quarter, and here's the play to Damian Riley. Well, Riley runs a fly, uh, fading on a fly, and they gave the quarterback time to throw it, and uh, he, put a, he, he put it out there, a real fine pass, and it was a great catch. He's fighting for the ball. He goes up and makes a catch because he was well covered. Coach, I don't know what much more Rodney Holland could have done except get a pole and hit him. He was all over him down there. Well, I thought uh, the mixture of plays, the running plays, slanting, tight ends, and they set up for that pass. Uh, he'd been going down, and then finally they went to him. This is what they were trying to do. Well, the play selection on this drive, and there you see the drive, 12 plays, 91 yards, took 5 minutes, 22 seconds from the standpoint of yards and time, the long and plays, too, the longest drive of the day. But just a masterful job of picking at that defense. Well, you mentioned earlier about um, them being able to take what the defense going to give them, and they did that. And with this fine selection, they were able to get the touchdown. That's a big extra point, Coach. Now it's an eight-point lead for Rhode Island. Montana State twice has missed on two-point conversion attempts. If they get a touchdown, they're going to have to get the two-point conversion now just to get even in this thing. But we still have a long way to go here. 14.55 left in this football game. State right back with it, and they're not going to get much field position out of this thing. They're going to take over at their own 15-yard line. This is Steve King with the football, and he's just not going to be able to find very much running room right here. Mark White made the tackle for Rhode Island. So now, 14.48 left in the game. The Bobcats of Montana State on their home field, down by eight. Need to get the football moving. As we mentioned earlier, in eight of their ten wins this year, Montana State came from behind. Running back is Eric Miller. Got a little room across the 25. Very close to first down yardage that time was Eric Miller. Todd Tunnell, the defensive end, making the stop for Rhode Island here. That's a very fine run coming up by Miller on the draw and it was a fine selection of play because they were looking for the pass. But Tim Clemens throwing the block for him up there. Second down and a short yard for Montana State with 14-17 left in the football game. Aaron Dietrich is wide to the right side. Kelly Davis wide left. Again it's Eric Miller the running back that gets the call. He's knocked down shy of the 30 at about the 28 and a half yard line but gets enough for the first down. So the Bobcats waddle the first down there. They've got it. The aerial duel between Earhart and Bradley from the yardage standpoint has been pretty much even here today. That was Jeff Chouinard and Charlie Bounty incidentally on the tackle that time for Rhode Island. Send Tom White wide to the left side. Bateman goes wide right. Now Bateman in motion. Taking Tony Hill with him. Heavy pressure applied that time by Charlie Bounty, the defensive tackle who was chasing Kelly Bradley and made Bradley unload it before he wanted to. So Bounty never got a hand on him and he made a big play anyway. Well, this has been a great play for the Bobcats uh, with the, to the, taking the ball to the strong side and screening to the short side. See Matt Sapkowski coming out of the ball game now and Mark White back in for Rhode Island. Second down 10, Montana State, the football on their own 28-yard line. Kelly Bradley. The long count of the line of swimming. Hires the ball, that's complete. Darren Dietrich leaves at the 35-yard line and stops three yards shy of the first down. It'll be third and about three 
Ray Williams and Guy Carbone making the tackle for Rhode Island. Fred, this is, this is the kind of pass that they throw. They can really throw it. It's a, it's a fine pattern. He runs a, an out, and it's controlled. And this is what they're going to have to use and, and then go for the ball. Third and three, Montana State. The Bobcats down by eight. They need a first down. Footballs at their own 36-yard line. And throw the quick on the far side. Oh, what a grab by Tom White. He made a sensational touchdown catch in the first half. He just made a great grab there. Had Ray Williams over there with him, but caught the ball and got the first down. You see some quickness? He Watch runs him a quick out and a great catch. Oof. That was a great one. He had slipped a little bit. He was all out of shape as he tried to get in the air, and he made the grab anyway. Tom White with another big catch, the junior out of Riverton, Wyoming. Gets Montana State a first down with 13 minutes and one second left in the game. <laughs> Looking, and the pass is complete to Eric Miller, who came out of the backfield. The gain on the play, about three and a half yards. Eric Miller picking up the reception. Mark Brockwell, a linebacker, made this tackle. This is a good fake, and, and the back is coming out of the backfield. Miller, and this is one of the passes that they throw, and they are doing the things now that they've been doing so well in the other games. Well, 28 left in the football game. Montana State down by eight. Could be a very big possession in this game. That pass is complete on the far side. That's very close to first down yardage. The grab was made by Brent Bateman and Ray Williams, who's been very active out of that backfield. Number one for Rhode Island was on top of him again. Williams, just a sophomore from Providence, and boy, he's had a busy day. He's on time. He's looking at him, and he makes the cut. And the ball is right there. So Bateman makes the catch, and Williams right there to make the hit. It's going to be third down, and about a foot for the first down at the 50-yard line. Eric Miller, one of the running backs, tucked in behind the center, Kelly Bradley. Little back sneak, and Bradley apparently has enough for the first down. That was a good call. I wouldn't be surprised now when they've thrown three or four outs that they'll go up top for the bomb on the fade. 11.41 left in the football game. First down, Montana State. Here's the sneak by Kelly Bradley. Capacity crowd looking on here in Bozeman, Montana. Division 1-2A semifinal action. Another game in the semifinals day. Louisiana Tech is leading New Tennessee 7-0 in the first quarter. Here is 2012 Rhode Island with 11.21 left in the football game. Bradley going to work, looking for White. Up the middle, complete. The 32-yard line, I think you called it, Coach. That's right. Tony Hill made the stop, but it's first down, Montana State. Tom White continues to have a big day. The defender was expecting White to go to the outside, and he did a post, and the ball was on target, and he made a good catch. So Tom White with a reception. First and 10 at the 32-yard line there. Back running, 10.59 left in the game. Tom White now with four grabs for 72 yards and a touchdown in this game today. Got a hit and drop. Big defensive play by Phil Mulcahy, the defensive tackle, a sophomore from Worcester, Massachusetts. Well, the Rhode Island defense has made some big plays today. They yeah. have. This is what he calls his, his pressure defense, putting the pressure on the pass and not allowing him the time to read the deep receivers. Second down, 21. The loss was 11. The football all the way back at the 42 and a half yard line now, so Bradley needs a big play. They take the handoff. He has Big Nell sitting in the middle, but he's going to go deep, and there's nobody down there. Why did come back to the inside? And they make... There's a flag down on the play. There was nobody over on the far side for Montana State. We'll see what we've got. 10 8 left in the ball game. Tom White was over on the sideline for a while, but he had cut back to the middle. And Kelly Bradley fired that thing about a mile and a half out of bounds over there. Now the officials are going to huddle. Rhode Island defensive back is there listening with him. 
see Tom White going off the field quite slowly on the far side. It may be a penalty against the Rhode Island defense. We'll see if Williams perhaps had a hand on the intended receiver over there. The officials getting it all sorted out here. I think we're going to have a pass interference call against Rhode Island. Here's the call, coach. Of hands against Ray Williams. Let's see if we can see it here, Coach. Put it was right on the right hand side of your screen. You can see it right there. Williams got a hand on Tom White. So it's going to be second down 16 now. Montana State picking up five on the penalty. But they still need They're showing yards. the blitz. That pass is intercepted. Or incomplete. It's intercepted. Picked off by Rhode Island. It is through the hands of Clements and picked off by Ray Williams. There he is, number one. We've been talking about him. He has had a big, big day. And now he comes up with the interception. He's a sophomore from Providence. And boy, what a big day he's having in the secondary for the Rams of Rhode Island. Bradley had made a good read, and that ball really was catchable. It was deflected, and Williams was right there. So Rhode Island, with 10 minutes and 4 seconds left in this game, gets the ball back, leading by 8. And if they can accomplish something on this drive, they are in very good shape. Earhart has his ball club out. Looking for Riley, and misses him. Passes incomplete. There's the clock. Shows you 9.59 left in this football game. There's your score, Rhode Island up by eight. Montana State needs the football back. There have been two interceptions in this game by Rhode Island. As many times as the ball's been in the air, you'd think there'd be more interceptions than that, but they haven't been. Second and ten. Earhart with a handoff to Rich Kelly, his running back, who bangs straight ahead for about three. Not much there. It's going to be third down, long yardage. Kelly Bradley now has hit 18 of 36 passes for 252 yards. He's been intercepted twice. Earhart's number is right there with him without the interceptions. Mark Fellows and Kirk Timmer on the tackle that time from Montana State, incidentally. And now it's third down and a long six yards. The Rhode Island bench. There's snow in the background, looking on. Earhart. Looking at Riley, throws behind him, and incomplete. Riley wasn't quite ready. The ball got there a little bit before he was set. Joe Roberts was working on him defensively there with help from Rodney Holland. And Montana State's going to get it back with 9-14 left in the game, down by eight. They might have made an adjustment on the tight end because the linebacker was running with him and wouldn't let him get the outside release. That's Mike Cassidy on the front for Rhode Island hit an 88-yard punt earlier in this game. That's a good punt, not 88 yards. Kimball with the football trying to get wide, being chased, chased hard and knocked down at the 33-yard line. You can see some slippies right there. The field is frozen rather solid. We have a timeout on the field now with nine minutes, four seconds left in this football game. There's your score. Rhode Island at the moment with an eight-point lead over Montana State. Duke Sports, a family tradition since 1952, has something for everyone on your Christmas gift list. For the fitness-conscious person, Dukes carry the finest in exercise equipment, including rowing machines, benches, and exercise bikes. For your favorite man or lady, choose from Avia, Tiger, and Puma running shoes, now sale priced. You'll find your favorite college jersey, your favorite college cap, plus a full array of pro caps and NFL helmets. Duke Sports, where you're always treated like a pro holiday village. What you've been missing, Avatel. A 
again. 9.04 left in this football game. 20 to 12, Rhode Island with an eight-point lead. Montana State with the football. First and 10 at their own 33. Kelly Bradley has the Bobcats down at the line of scrimmage. And they have a flag falling on the far side of the field. We have two receivers over there, Tom White and Kelly Davis. And the official on that side of the field dropped the flag as they were moving around over there. An offside penalty against Montana State, so it's going to be first and 15 back at the 28-yard line now. Nine oh four left in this football game. We've been playing for two hours and fifty minutes. Both teams throwing the ball a lot. Here comes Kelly Davis in motion. Now he goes back the other way. Bradley fakes the handoff, and now looking for Davis and throws over his head and out of bounds up along the forty-five yard line. Kelly Davis got open, got behind the man. But Kelly Bradley just overthrew him, and again, it was that same name, Ray Williams, running with him back there. Here he comes. You see Davis back in motion. Now he just simply turns it upfield. Now there's Williams with the coverage on him. Bradley just overthrew him that time. And he was open. So it's second and 15 at the 28-yard line for Montana State. 8.58 left in the game. A little draw play here. Eric Williams, and there's not enough there. He's going to be knocked down as the 30. It's going to be third down and 13 for Montana State. In their own 30-yard line, Matt Sapkowski, a linebacker from Seymour, Connecticut, and his running mate, Mark Rockwell, the other linebacker from Westport, Connecticut, made the play. You know, Dave worried about those things, about the penalties on situations like this where they're going for 15, and it could have been about five, and it would have been a first down. Mark Rockwell's out of Staples High School. I'm going to give you their nickname in about a minute. I happen to know that. A minute, men. They're showing the blitz. Right at this time, going deep for Davis. It's complete. At the 30, at the 25, he's going to go. It's a touchdown, Montana State. Kelly Davis beat his man deep and slipped the tackle. And now the Bobcats are back in the two, and look at the crowd here in Bozeman. They got it all. That is a 70-yard touchdown pass from Kelly Bradley to Kelly Davis. The sophomore from Butte, Montana, gathered it in, slipped the tackle, and took it the rest of the way. And now with 8-10 left in the game, it's a two-point lead for Rhode Island. There's no doubt what Montana State's going to do here. going to go for the two. They have missed on two two-point conversion attempts earlier today. Now with 8-10 left in the game, they're going to go for the two points that could tie it. The throw is knocked down. Good defensive play. That was Todd Tunnell that made the defensive play. It was a very good pass, but it was a great effort on the defensive, on the defensive player because he got his hand up. Todd Tunnell knocking the ball down in the corner of the end zone and keeping Rhode Island in front by two. There's the touchdown pass to Kelly Davis, 70 yards that tightens this ball game up. So now with eight minutes and 10 seconds left in this football game in Bozeman, Montana, there's your score, Rhode Island up by two. Hi, I'm Diane. And I'm Nancy. Our family at Howard's Pizza would like to invite your family to come join us. Howard's Pizza, with 25 years of service. Young America for Men, the right looks for the important men in your life. Sweaters, the season's most wanted item, and Young America has them. Crew necks, V necks, cable knits, and velours in a world of colors from $11.99. Plus the right sports shirt to wear with those sweater fashions. And Young America has a broad range of corduroy slacks and fashion denim jeans and cords at $19.99. 
plus a great selection of suits, sports coats, and dress shirts. For selection and knowledgeable salespeople, shop Young America, Piccadilly Lane. We're sailing to the end zone, as you see, nobody close to him. And Kelly Davis taking it on in. So that touchdown makes it a two-point lead for Rhode Island. I should say it gets Montana State within two, but three times a day they've gone for the two-point conversion. And missed. But now they're within the range for a field goal could give them the lead if it comes down to that. Tunnell making a deflection here. And the pass down for the two points. And here's Ray Williams up the sideline. Gets by a man and he is all the way back to the 50-yard line. Oh, what a day Williams has had. The return comes back to midfield after he had dropped the ball and then picked it up. And Ken Lang, a linebacker, finally chased him down from Montana State. But Rhode Island comes out of this thing with tremendous field position. They will set up at the 48-yard line in Montana State with eight minutes left in the game. Here's Williams bringing it back, Coach. He gets to the outside, and they gave him the good block to spring him. And he's a very good runner. And he nearly went the distance. Rhode Island has the first and ten. Earhart has his ball club down at the Montana State 48. Throws complete. This is Donfield, one of the tight ends inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. With 7.49 left in the game, Rhode Island trying to move it again. Greg Wilkes, a linebacker, was the initial tackler on the play with help from Cleet Linebarger. Second down, five, Rhode Island with seven minutes and 33 seconds left in the game. The Rams of the University of Rhode Island holding on to a two-point lead with good field position. We saw Earhart's numbers on the day. Both he and Bradley have had big days. Ooh, John Field had it and dropped it. And now a flag goes in the air. That happened after the fact on the far side. That's Don Field. The pass is intended for. Derek Abel was a cornerback over there with him, and somebody... He, he read Abel the gave him a late people, shot. and it's a scream to Don Field, and he missed the ball. Well, after he, the pass was incomplete, that's Derek Abel putting a late hit on him. Yeah, but he was worked up over having missed the ball. So it's going to be a penalty against Montana State, and Rhode Island... Will now set up at the 29-yard line. The concern on the face of Montana State fan there. 7-16 left in this game. Rhode Island leading by two at the 29-yard line, and that is a big, big penalty. Very Cable with a late hit. Football is going to be spotted near the 25-yard line. Kirk Timmer and Joe Roberts that time stopping Damian Riley after he makes the catch, and Riley's had a big day for Rhode Island. Now, they're giving Riley a lot of room now. They don't want him to run by him, and he makes the quick turn in, and he has the reception. Coach, I see him make that cut. Now, I want to mention again that Rhode Island came here, and they had to borrow shoes from the University of Montana, 36 pairs, because they came with the wrong shoes. He might not have been able to make that cut if they hadn't been able to borrow those shoes from Montana. Well, what a hit put on Rich Kelly that time by the defensive line at Montana State. It's going to be third down and a few yards here for Rhode Island. Greg Wilkes made the initial tackle on the play. The football is going to be spotted at the 21-yard line. It's going to be third down and about two and a half. And one of your first thoughts would be about field goal. But Bob Griffin isn't even going to think about it here. He's up by two. There's 6.07 to play. It's third down two, and they're going to go for the first down. Riley wide to the left side. Civitella wide right. Pitch out to Kelly, and he is stopped. A flag is down on the play. Rhode Island stops shy of the first down on the third down attempt at the 20. Well, I talked about a field goal. They're in four down range. I guess you'd have to do it on that down. Holland and Joe Roberts, but let's see what they do on fourth down. Well, it all may become academic because there's going to be a holding call here. And 
down to see what Rhode Island will do with it. I apologize. I was thinking about fourth down in the field goal attempt. That was third down. So they're going to talk things over here with 5.53 left in the game. Montana State has an option here. It looks like they're going to accept the penalty, Coach. Oh, I'm sure they're going to accept it. Get him out of, well, it could be out of field goal range, but at least he'd have to do it uh, from a greater distance. Well, the ball now is spotted at the 31. It's going to be third down and 12 and a half for the first down. So they have one more down to throw down and try to get the first down. And then they'll have to try the field goal. We'll see what Earhart comes up with third and 12 at the Montana State 31. Looks at Riley. Goes for Riley. In the corner of the end zone. And it's incomplete. The cornerback with him was Rodney Holland. There's Damian Ryland coming back, so now it's going to be fourth down, 12 and a half. There's Damian Riley. Riley. Well, the last time he made, he turned in. This time he's putting on the speed and, and he's doing a fly, but it, it, he wasn't able to get it. It was over his head. Holland right there with him. Yeah, he's with him. So now it's fourth down. 13 will call it. Riley goes wide right. Civitella wide left. Rhode Island with a two-point lead looking at fourth and long with 5.32 left in the game. Montana State desperately needs to stop this play. And it's complete. That's first down yardage inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. Big play for Rhode Island. The Rams have the first down. And I believe that's Foster that has the football. This is the tight end. And he's going down enough for the first down, and it's a turnout. And the ball is on target. Ball is on target. That is a big first down for Rhode Island now with 5.24 left in the game. The ball is at the 15-yard line of Montana State. Foster made a great catch then, and he ran a, a great, uh, an outstanding pattern. How about that for a big play, fourth and 13, and you get the first down? With 5.10 left in the game. Turn over the head of Damian Wiley on the near side. And now 5.03 left. Montana State bench, things getting a little tougher for the Bobcats over there. And they know what they're facing here. They desperately need the football back now. It's 20 to 18 Rhode Island with 5.03 left in the game. One of those people sitting in the middle is Kelly Bradley, number 12, the quarterback. That's Tom White, a wide receiver sitting next to him on the near side. Now it's second and 10, Rhode Island. The Bobcat defense needs to make a big play down here and get the ball back. The Rams simply want to hold on to it and perhaps punch something else in there. And if they can, they will nearly ice it. Not much there for the running back. He's inside the 15. Got a couple of yards on the play, but it's still going to be third and long. Tom Earhart looking to the bench to see what the call is going to be. Lonnie Burke, the nose guard. Greg Wiltz, the linebacker there from Montana State going to be third down eight at the 13 yard line well they taking a lot of time off the clock with the running running plays four minutes 32 seconds left in the ball game Civitella goes wide right Damian Riley wide left Rich Kelly's the lone running back downfield the tight end left Foster the tight end right and now a timeout taken Tom Earhart did not like what he saw when he got to the line of scrimmage and he decided to burn a timeout right there. So this time now comes with four minutes and 20 seconds left in this football game. The score at the moment, Rhode Island 20, Montana State 18. Hi, I'm Diane. And I'm Nancy. Our family at Howard's Pizza would like to invite your family to come join us. Pizza with 25 years of service. Hope we're going to a New Year's Eve party. <clears throat> I'd prefer an office party. I want to go to a school Christmas party. 
McDonald's Chicken McNuggets 20-pack, the life of any holiday party. How do I look? Delicious. Golden brown is your color. Whoopee! Let's go to a sleigh ride party. It's a good time for the great taste. Parties, parties. Oh. That's all you 20-packs ever think of. Of <laughs> McDonald's. Time for McDonald's gift certificates. 50 cents each or a book of 10 for $5. Rhode Island. They lead by two. They're at the 13-yard line. Their heart in the end zone. One second. A big defensive play for Montana State. They're at the 40. They're at midfield. And they're going to go for Montana State. That is Scott Vesova. Scott Vesova intercepted very near the goal line and takes it all the way back. Oh, it's Joe Roberts. It's Christian. It's Joe Roberts who made the play the strong safety. Look at this crowd. Look at him piled up in the snowbank in Bozeman. You talk about electricity. Down by two points. Shoved back against their own goal line. Joe Roberts, a senior strong safety from Missoula, Montana, just made the biggest play of the year for the Bobcats. Tom throws a flat pass, and he steps in front of the receiver, and Joe has... Good, a good block here, and from here on, it's a matter of running. Tex Lacora got so excited, he almost knocked his own man down, but now Robert slips the tackle there. His second interception of the year, he's never had a bigger play in his life. The extra point attempt is good, and now it's a four-point lead for Montana State with 405 to play. They say they got a five-point lead, 25 points. A 97-yard interception return, the longest interception return of the year for Montana State. Oh, what a play. Tom goes with the pass to the flat, and Joe steps in front of the receiver. They had him covered. He had two defenders, and from here, he gets a good screen, and the last man misses him. Well, they almost had a shot at him right there. Tex Sikora, his own teammate, <laughs> almost knocked him down in his excitement at midfield. <laughs> Once he got by his own guy, he was in pretty good shape. So it's 25-20, Montana State. And now Rhode Island has the pressure on them. They'll get the ball back with 4.05 to play. You think they're not excited in Bozeman? Take a look at that. Joe Roberts, a 6'2 senior from Missoula, Montana. With what at this moment would have to go down as the biggest play of the year for this Bobcat football team. One roster, number 47, is listed as Scott De Silva. That's wrong. 47 is Joe Roberts. Do you think the understatement that Dave made that they could always come from behind with Boy. that? They've done it all year long. We mentioned earlier, and this one's a long way from being over, but in the 10 games they've won so far this year, eight of them, they had to come from behind to do it. Low bouncing kick. That ball's a loose ball. It's anybody's ball. A fight for the football, and Montana State has it. And now look at him in Bozeman. This ball game has turned around. Look at the excitement. On the far sideline, Dave Arnold beside himself with joy. Here it is. It takes that hop, and he is able to handle it. And the coverage is down now, and they're there. Four minutes and one second left in the football game. There's your clock. There's your score. 25-20 Montana State. They're at Rhode Island's 31-yard line. An electrifying turnaround. Late in the afternoon here in Bozeman. Eric Winters, the lone running back. Gets the call and goes straight ahead inside the 30. And I'm sure that right here, Montana State coach would like to burn a little bit of that clock up. What would you do, Fred? Burn as much clock as I could. I hope to get a first down. Clock running, 337 left. Second down, eight now. Green Kelly Davis, wide to the right side for Montana State. Darren Dietrich goes wide left. Big Mel, the tight end right. Two running backs are out there. Eric Miller is one of them. The 
They go for the corner for Davis. Incomplete. Almost came up with another outstanding grab at the seven-yard line, but he was well defended over there. Tony Hill on the coverage that time, or Todd Tunnell, which one is it? Tony Tunnell. ran with him very well that time. So it's going to be third down eight, Montana State, with 315. He almost made a great catch. The man that had his hand on the football for Rhode Island appeared to be Lang. And he just simply couldn't handle it. It's Ken Lang, and you really can't blame him. He's a linebacker. He's not used to handling the ball. It was a very tough kick to handle. And he probably feels worse than anybody about the whole thing right now. There's Miller with some running room up the middle. Broke the tackle. He's at the 10. He's going to score. And that one just may do it. Eric Miller with a big, big run. And look at the whole Montana State bench is coming on the field to celebrate. It's now an 11-point lead for Montana State. A 29-yard touchdown run by Eric Miller, a junior back out of Auburn, Washington, and here it is. Here it is with the throw. He broke some tackles. Put a pretty good and it shot. was a great effort by Miller. Hey, great, met, great effort. Guy Carbone put a pretty good shot on him on this select field right there. He, he just, just kept going. He wouldn't be denied. How's that for balance? Twice he got hit and spun on this icy field, and twice he just kept on going. And now with 3.07 left in this game, it's 41-20, Montana State. Hey, coach. We just talk about how rapidly things can turn around in these things. Here it is, Rhode Island up late in the game, sitting right on the Montana State goal line. And all of a sudden, in the span of about four plays, Montana State's up by 11. They say the only certainties about football are the uncertainties. I believe that you think this isn't an emotional roller coaster ride for the people on both sides of this field here today. Boy, the Rhode Island Club and a good club they are made a 2,500 mile trip to get here. Look like they might be in shape to put the thing away with four minutes to play, and all of a sudden they're down by 11. And Montana State still has the extra point attempt coming up with 307 to play. Louisiana Tech was leading Middle Tennessee 7-3 at halftime in the other semifinal game today. Kelly Bradley is going to go for two here. Lobs it toward the corner, and it's a pass interference call. Pass was intended for Dwayne Baker. Tony Hill is over there with him and interfered. He has. He interfered with him. There you see Dwayne Baker getting knocked down in the corner of the end zone on the intended pass. Well, he didn't have any other choice, so he's going to catch it. Now Dwayne Baker is going off the field, so is Tom White, so Montana State's going to try something different. Baker's a big, tall guy. Apparently they like his size down in the corner of the end zone, because he just threw the lob up there and hoped that he could get up and get it. Big Nell said as a wide out here. Split the running backs. And they're not sure what they want to do. So a timeout's going to be called here by Montana State before they run the play. They've taken their big tight end, Joe Big Nell, and set him wide right. There goes Kelly Bradley to the bench to talk to his coach. Well, they want Joe to make the defender turn his back to the passer. Montana State bench. This is going to go back to the interception here, Coach. This is Joe Robbins, who steps in front of the intended receiver, and he picks up his blocking down the field. This is the, the that play was that turned the last, all around. He's on his way. At that juncture, Montana State was down by two, and as soon as Joe Roberts planted those feet in the end zone, they're up by four, and now they're up by 11. 3.07 to play. Now they decided they're going to kick the extra point. Now Carter hits it, and it's good. And now there's timeout on the field here in Bolton, Montana. They now have three minutes and seven seconds left in this football game. And we may have a penalty flag there. The officials talking things over along the line of scrimmage. 
And offside against Rhode Island, the extra point will stand. So it's a 32-20 lead now with 3.07 to play. Montana State has gone up by a dozen after being down by two points with a little over four minutes left in this game. Again, timeout here with 3.07 left in the game. There's your score. The Bobcats of Montana State are up by 12. Well, it's gorgeous scenery in the background. We've talked about it all day long, and all of a sudden for the over 12,000 partisan fans here in Bozeman, Montana, the scoreboard has become a pretty part of the scenery, too. It didn't look so good for them with four minutes left in the game. Rhode Island had battled their way to a two-point lead. And we're right down on the goal line. And then Joe Roberts with that 97-yard interception return for a touchdown has changed the day. Now Carter will hit the kickoff. Tony Hill going back deep for Rhode Island. Along with Mike Sanders. Coach, it's funny. We were just sitting there talking about the fact that the, the Montana State defense had to make a big play. And I know what I was thinking. Maybe you too. I'm just thinking in terms of somehow getting the ball, let alone 97-yard return for a touchdown. I just think of them getting possession, and boy, they made a big play in spades. Well, that was the way I was thinking that they would get it, not knowing that they would make that type of interception. Carter with a low driving kick, picked up by Tony Hill on a one-yard line. Needs a block right there to get the outside, gets the outside at the 25, and steps out of bounds at the 30. So Rhode Island has the ball, but they're down by 12 points now with 3.01 left in the game. Rodney Holland chased him out of bounds. The Rams need to strike quickly, then get the football back. Well, they get it in good field position. Well, this we know. They have the long passing game. If they could get a quick touchdown here and then get an onside kick, a lot can happen in three minutes and one second. A lot has happened in just over a minute already in this football game. Bear Hart, under heavy pressure, is going to be sacked. Big play by the Montana State defense. Mark Fellows, Greg Wilkes, and Tex Sikora all in on the play for Montana State. Let me pose this question to you now. Suppose Montana State comes back from 1-10 and 10 last year to the national championship this year. <laughs> Think about that. Well, you? that would be great. Is that a tribute to the coaches and players here? Well, it certainly would be. You couldn't do any better. Second and 18. They dump a quick out. It's incomplete. And all of a sudden, Rhode Island can't get anything going. Boy, this is a good football team. You hate to see it happen to them. But you have to take your, your hats off to the Montana State Ball Club. I'd like to take an opportunity while well, I have a moment here to thank the championship media coordinator, Dave Cascia, the athletic director, John Checkman of the University of Rhode Island, head football coach Bob Griffin and his staff, and from Montana State University, athletic director Tom Perry, head football coach Dave Arnold and his staff, and sports information directors, Bruce Parker of Montana State, Jim Norman from Rhode Island. Outstanding jobs by one and all, gentlemen, and we thank you for all your help here today. Very hard. Third and 18, gets the pass complete to his running back, Mike Sanders, and they don't have the first down. It's going to be fourth and long. Football not quite up to the 30-yard line. Clock running shows two minutes left to play. 2.01, actually, as the warning comes. A Rhode Island player down in the field and injured. So timeout taken for the injury here with two minutes and one second left. Rhode Island has the football. They're going to be looking at fourth and 12. They're down by 12 points with two minutes and a second to play. Not much point in kicking it away now. Well, I believe they're going to try for the first down. You remember the last time they had about 18 or 16 and they made it. At halftime again, Louisiana Tech leading Middle Tennessee 7-3 in the other semifinal game today. The winners of those two games meet next Saturday in Charleston, South Carolina for the MCAA Division I-2A National Championship. That would be a great match. Louisiana Tech fought back from a 1-3 record 
And now they out about nine to four. Could be the last cast here for Rhode Island. With a minute 51 left in the game, they're looking at fourth and 12. Down by 12 points. No hurry. Dropping back. Throws deep. Don Field was hit. It's pass interference. It's going to be a first down. Pass interference call. Doug Kimball got to him. Don Field trying for the reception up around midfield was hit by Doug Kimball just before the ball got there. And that's going to give Rhode Island a first down with a minute 40 left in the game. If they still have to do something very quickly, they're down by 12 points. One touchdown just simply will not do it. Coach two outstanding football teams, as you would expect here today, and both these universities so well represented by everybody. Well, I think the coaches should be proud. I, I know you don't want to lose, but they put on the show, and, and they've really done well, both teams. Of course, the winner, you know how that is. The only problem is somebody has to lose. lose. Get First and 10 now, Rhode Island, at their own 43. Earhart going deep. Don Field, the intended receiver, is broken up. With Doug Kimball was the man to put the shot on him just as the ball got there. It's going to be second and 10 with a minute 36 left in the game. We'll look at the passing games from both schools here before we leave. Kelly Bradley from Montana State has hit 19 of 39 for 322 yards here today. He's been intercepted twice. And Tom Earhart has had a big, big day for the University of Rhode Island. They both came into this game with big credentials. And they have both lived up to those credentials today. Earhart is at 29 of 56 for 279 yards, and he's been intercepted once. And now he takes a timeout to go to the sideline and talk to his coach, Bob Griffin. Timeout comes here with 129 left in this football game, and the score, Montana State 32, University of Rhode Island 20. What we seek to advance, what we seek to develop in all of our colleges and universities, are educated men and women who can bear the burdens of responsible citizenship, who can make judgments about life as it is and as it must be. In that great effort, I urge you to participate. Nothing will give you more satisfaction. No need is greater. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Strong words to live by from one of our former presidents. A minute 36 left in this game. Montana State with a 12-point lead. Second and 10 for Rhode Island at their own 43-yard line. Tom Earhart trying to trigger a big play that will give Rhode Island some hope. Finds his running back, Rich Kelly, for the completion. That's a first down inside the 45 of Montana State at the 43-yard line. And it stops the clock with 128 left in the game. Greg Wilkes and Kirk Timmer, the two linebackers from Montana State, dropping back with a little deeper coverage that time, made the tackle. They're willing to give up short lob yardage here and kill some five because Rhode Island has to have two touchdowns to win this thing, and they only have a minute 24 left in the game. Civitella wide left. Riley wide right. They're going to go for Riley deep, and it's incomplete. Well defended over there and broken up nicely by Rodney Holland. Good play. Holland was with him all the way. 109 left in the game. Second and 10 for Rhode Island now. Wait, 32-20. The Bobcats leading Rhode Island and there's your clock in the middle of the screen with 109 left in this game. Earhart sends Civitella wide to the right side. Riley wide left. Downfield the tight end left. Foster the tight end right. This pass intended for Riley and thrown behind him. Downfield and Riley were both over there and the pass is incomplete. 
And now Coach Bob Griffin is going to call his quarterback, Tom Earhart, to the sideline again. And I think there's some disagreement over who was supposed to be where on the play. I don't think the assignment was clear. So the out to the flanker. Now Dave Gilbert checks into the ball game at a wide receiver. Damian Riley goes out. Well, we have seen some outstanding play by both teams here today. Big plays on both offense and defense by both teams. And a game worthy of the final four games. Earhart throws complete to Civitella. Steps out of bounds. Shy of the first down. Clayton Linebarger was over defending. He stepped out of bounds with a minute and two left to play. And he stepped out about two yards shy of the first down, it would appear. We're going to wait till they set the ball. It's going to be fourth down and about two. Well, that was designed for him to get the first down and step out. He probably didn't know where he was at the time of the reception. Could have just misread a sign line marker along there somewhere. So now it's fourth down two with a minute two left to play. Rhode Island has the ball down by 12 points. Going on the far side, it struck. That may be the last cast. Dave Gilbert had his hands on it and couldn't hold it. You can see the disappointment written all over Dave Gilbert. A move that he's made so many times in his life and made the reception so cleanly just failed him here today and Montana State will have the football with 56 seconds left to play in a 12-point lead. Earhart had the football there. Along the Ram bench, disappointment. A 2,500-mile ride home tonight. You know it has to be tough for him. On the other hand, there'll be great joy here in Bozeman. 51 seconds left in the football game with the clock running here. And now Rhode Island will take a timeout to stop the clock with 48 seconds left. But there's really not much they can do here, Coach. I know how uh, Bob feels now. There's the Montana State sideline. They now have second down 10. Well, you've been on both sides of this so many times. Unfortunately, we're happy to say the winning side so much more often than, than the defeat. But as you mentioned, the emotions on both sides of the field right now are very deep. That's correct. So the losers put the helmets away. And the winners have to go to Charleston, South Carolina and try to prove it all over again next week. <laughs> That's one thing about this game. Once it's over, it's what have you done for me lately? Well, I, I believe this should be great inspiration. The manner in which they came back to win it. As they run their second down play here, we will tell you that Tom Earhart hit 31 of 61 passes for 301 yards here today. And the man who just dropped a one knee with the football, Kelly Bradley, hit 19 of 39 for 322 yards here today. Earhart intercepted once, and that was a 97-yard return by Joe Roberts that changed the complexion of the game. Bradley was intercepted twice. And it was Joe Roberts who made the play, the interception at the three-yard line and the 97-yard return that brought Montana State from behind to the lead. And this will be the last play of the game right here. With this play, Montana State will go on into the national championship game next weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. They will face the winner of Middle Tennessee, Louisiana Tech. It's over here in Bozeman. The clock ticking down, three, two, one. And the Bobcats are in the national championship game. There's their head coach. Arnold shaking hands all around. Our final score here today as they begin to celebrate Montana State 32, Rhode Island 20. Dave Arnold looking for Rhode Island coach Bob Griffin to shake his hands there. Coach, just a very good football game here today. Certainly it was. I think both teams played well. It's just unfortunate one team has to win, the other has to lose. Well, then Joe Roberts, 97-yard interception return for the touchdown. Changed the complexion of the game. He did it with his team down by two late in the game. Rhode Island with the lead, threatening to score again. And from that point on, Montana State owned it. Again, the final. Montana State 32, Rhode Island 20. Thanks for watching, and good afternoon.
I'm Diane. And I'm Nancy. Our family at Howard's Pizza would like to invite your family to come join us. Howard's Pizza, with 25 years of service. At Montana Federal Credit Union, we're here when you need us. In my business, I'm always on call. I have to be there when you need me. And that's how Montana Federal Credit Union is. They were there when I needed them to help get my business started. And they've been there ever since. I've never forgotten that, and I've never forgotten how well I was treated there. Not as a new account or a new business, but as a person. That's Montana Federal Credit Union. They're there when you need them. Stop in today and see how easy it is to join. Tell me about that play. Was it a bad pass, bad route that was run, or was it just good defense? Well, it was it was good defense. The uh, the defensive back, I think, he felt that it was going to come that way, and he sat for it and uh, took it, picked it off, and uh, unfortunately he was able to take it back all the way. But it was a it was a great defensive play. Okay, thank you, coach. Woo! All right. Okay. Hang on one second, okay? Hang on one second. He's uh, going. Looking for I'm an old hand at Christmas shopping, and I shop at KG Men's stores. Look for holiday bargains like these. Leather jackets, warm-up suits, scarves and leather gloves, polar fleece, jeans, slacks and robes, sweaters that you'll love, flannel shirts, chambray shirts, and even shirts with ties. Suits or ski wear, short sleeve knits, gifts for all the guys. I think you'll like shopping at KG Men's Stores. I do. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Why is everybody all dressed up? Could there be a mini-series in the wind? Are questions getting harder on the TV game shows? Does Arnold Schwarzenegger have muscles in his makeup? Where does Roy Clark go to Unreal? How do they sell American movies overseas? Where is Tarzan swinging now? Don't miss entertainment this week, Saturday night at 11.35. This is KFBB-TV. Channel 5, Great Falls. To the overrun of our previous program, we now join our regularly scheduled program, already in progress. Anything, as long as it was navy blue. Today, you're more of an individual. Jonathan Smarter.